Hello students, welcome to the course records management. My name is Dr. Musa Adams. Um, I'll be taking you through info 331 records management. The, as individuals, we keep records of our own affairs and other activities in one way or, the other, or another. This helps us to make decisions and as individuals and institutions. While managing an institution's records in more, is more complex than managing our own records, the two rely on the same basis. Records management principles will be handled in session one. And after completing this session, the students should be able to define and explain what a record is, explain the qualities and properties of records, list some uses of records and explain what they use their records for, distinguish between the two types of records, explain the four main characteristics of records. Session outline. This session has been divided into five subtopics. The key topics to be covered in the session are as follows. Topic one, definition of records. Topic two, properties and qualities of a record. Topic three, uses of records. Topic four, the types of records. Topic five, characteristics of records. And some reading list. Now we look at definition of records. Records come in a variety of formats. It may be paper records, that's correspond minutes, reports, memoranda, and the rest. Raw microfilms such as photograph, prints, negatives, transparencies, and x-rays, and electronic records such as audiovisuals, online databases, multimedia, and others. The International Council on Archives defines a record as recorded information produced or received in the initiation, conduct, or completion of an institutional or individual activity. And that comprises content, context, and structure sufficient to provide the evidence of the activity. This means that when you want to find out what a record is, there are certain characteristics that you have to look at. The context within which it was produced, the content whether it, catch, it captures what was meant to be, and the structure, the format in which the record was created. Other definitions are in the International Standard Organization, ISO 15489, which defines a record as information created, received, and maintained as evidence by an organization or person in the transaction of a business or in the pursuance of legal obligation, regardless of media. So here, we're talking about the evidence that has been captured as a result of a transaction. And the media does not matter. When we say regardless of media, we mean to say that it can be paper-based or electronic-based. One of the key words in this definition is transaction. So it is a transaction that leads to the generation of records. And the record that is uh, captured serves as evidence of the transaction and retained so that whenever it is needed, it can be referred to. We move on to properties and qualities of records. To serve their purpose of providing reliable evidence, records must possess three key properties inherent in all records. And these are the content, which have been explained earlier on, which refers to the information or data held in the record. Context, in terms of being capable of ascertaining how a record relates to other records and to the organization which created it. That means that there should be a relationship with other records that have been generated within, and that should capture the information that, that has been produced. And then the structure refers to the form or format records take. Uh, records in both paper and electronic form should be comprehensive. These are more qualities of a record. A record should be created for every transaction for which evidence is required. Accurate means that a record should accurately document the transaction that gave rise to it so that when you want to use it as evidence in a legal situation, it will be accepted. Uh, complete and meaningful, a record should include sufficient information about the context in which it was created and used, about its structure and about its linkages to other records. That will make it acceptable also when it comes to legal issues. Understandable and usable, it should be possible to 
extract from the record the information it contains that is intended to convey without any loss of information. Without, if it's not, if it's incomplete, then you're not going to be able to have, find it useful and usable. And then compliant means that the record should comply with any regulatory and accountability requirements that apply to the organization that created it. In some organizations, there are standards that have to be met. And in legal issues, uh, courts will expect that certain records follow certain format in the ca capture so that the inf information inherent in will be used. Uses of records. There are several uses of records. Governments need re rec managed records to uphold the rule of law. When we talk about rule of law and go to court, the records must be available to be accountable and to ensure the interests of citizens are protected so that people will act within the confines of the law and not go arbitrarily. Executives need records to enable them to formulate policies and make accurate decisions. The university authorities need records to be able to carry out their activities and take decisions. Action officers, those who work within offices and work is referred to them. When you receive a letter is received within the institution, it's minuted to an officer to take action on. They fall on records to be able to take on their activities. And auditors, when they go to audit institutions, so as to see whether the incomes and expenditures tally, they also rely on records. Then citizens need records when you have to fight for your land and the other issues in court. When you want to acquire a passport, you need your birth certificate and all those. These are all records that you have to, to be able to fight for your rights and interests. Now, users of records, historians and researchers need records to be able to write the books that they write and the researches that are carried out. And communities need permanently preserved records to enable today's society to connect with the past. To know where we've come from it will tell us where we are today and then where we can project to go tomorrow. And it's rely on availability of records that have been preserved. Employers rely on records to provide core information for conducting their businesses. And ombudsmen or ombudsmen need records to determine whether or not decisions and actions have been taken equitably. Ombudsman here can be re equated to the SHRAG, Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice. In carrying out its work, it has to fall on records. Now, types of records. The two types of records are public and private records. Public records are records created or received and maintained by government agencies or institutions within the public sector. We, talk, we call them public records because the public institutions are funded by the tax that the citizens repay. And so out of this, the records that are generated are said to be public goods, and so they are public records. Whilst private records are created, received, and maintained by non-government institutions, families, and individuals, individuals relating to their affairs, the funding comes from the shareholders who own the company. And so they are, their records are private records. They can make them accessible with permission to whoever needs to use them. Now, characteristics of records. We have four main characters or basic characteristics of records. Static is the first one. Records created must be fixed and not be susceptible to change. What we mean here is that once a record is created and is accepted as reflecting the transaction that took place, without authority, nobody should tamper with it. And once it is tampered with, it cannot claim to serve the purpose for which it was generated and it will, be, it will not be accepted in the court of law. Authority, records should be created under authority. That can be pr uh, proved. So if you work for the University of Ghana, you must be authorized to create a record in, by virtue of the schedule that you are placed on. And so records provide the official evidence of the activity or transaction they document. Signatures, letterheads, seals, and office, uh, stamps are obvious indicators of the official nature of records. So whenever you receive a letter, you want to see a, that it's on a letterhead, that somebody has signed it, that is dated and stamped. That makes it, that gives it the authority. Unique, unique records should be maintained in the appropriate context because they were generated during a particular transaction or business process. So because of this, we say that records should be in the official custody of the institution that generated it 
to avoid tamper, tampering with it. And the one way of looking at uniqueness is the fact that a record should be the original. There's only one original record. We don't have more than all the others are duplicates. Authentic, a record is authentic if it can be verified. It must be possible to prove that the records are what they say they are. So if you say authenticity, you're talking about the fact that everybody can say that this is what was generated and not anything else. Now a summary. In this session, you have learned that a record serves as evidence in a transaction of business or in pursuance of legal obligations. Public records are created and received by MDs, ministry departments, and agencies, while private records are generated, are created by private individuals. Some users of records include government, researchers, auditors, employers, action officers, etc. Static authority, unique and authentic are the characteristics of a record. Sample, there are sample questions for consideration. What is the difference between public records and private records? What are some of the properties and qualities of a record? Records are used by different kinds of people. Name any five of them. Explain the four basic characteristics of a record. References, there are references for the student to have further reading and understanding and can go beyond the references provided because online you may find information. Just make sure that it is coming from a credible source. Thank you.